Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Harmoning, president of the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our 2021 candidate forum for District 191 School Board. I want to thank our public policy sponsors who make these events possible. We have Kraus Anderson, EFH, Shippers Resource Companies, and XL Energy. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our, our moderator, Brady Folkstadt. Brady? Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am Brady Folkstadt. I'm the chair of the Public Policy Committee for the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce and uh, presently uh, work at Lakeview Bank. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we actually invited both candidates. Um, however, uh, Abriana Savage has not arrived. And so it will take a little bit different of a spin than our normal forum, as uh, we'll just be spending a little bit more time getting to know our candidate, Sue Saeed, uh, for the presently open school board spot for District 191. Uh, with that, Sue, welcome. Thank you very much for coming and uh, joining us so our voters can learn a little bit more about you um, and uh, your thoughts on District 191. But with that, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what motivated you to run for office this time? Well, thank you, Brady, for having me and everyone else. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for corresponding this um, session with me. Um, so my name is Sue Saeed. Um, you will um, probably see SWAT often, um, but family and friends call me Sue. Um, I am currently, I live in Burnsville. I graduated from, from Burnsville and I work in Burnsville. Um, so I've been on the school board member um, since January of this year. Um, so I was able to kind of get my, you know, um, get the taste of it for the last nine, 10 months. Um, and here I am once again, and I'm glad to be able to do this. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, just question with that. Do you have any children or anything in the school district as of yet or no? Or Yes, yes, I do. Can't okay. forget the four girls that I have in our school district. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah. Excellent. I, I'm so surprised they're so quiet today. School is off, so they don't have school today, but they're letting mommy do this at home. There you go. Um, good. But I do have, I do have four girls. Um, each of them are in, uh, through our district 191. Even my youngest goes to over our Diamond Head Education Center where they have the daycare there. Um, so we are very much embedded in Burnsville. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Well, then uh, with this next question, I think you know as well as anybody that there's been, uh, it's not quite been normal. There's been a lot of upheaval and changes and such in school and uh, in District 191 included. Mm -hmm. How do we see ourselves getting back on track and staying on track um, kind of post COVID here? You know, we, I think as, as a, a school district and even community wise, we all had to learn together in the beginning and we were able to um, take notes and see what works and what worked for us well and what didn't. Um, so that is why we were able to start our school year. Um, and, and that I feel like was just a, a group collaboration, whether it was on our board, our um, superintendent, our administrators, even our community members. And it took all of us to kind of figure that out and, and, and make sure all of our students were welcomed. Um, all of our students came back safely and we continue to still work with that and monitor that. Excellent. No, that, that, that sounds, that sounds good. Uh, we were, uh, also looking at uh, one of the things that's been a perpetual issue here, mm -hmm. it is with many schools, but uh, 191 included is the budget. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts or kind of your priorities as we look at balancing uh, the school district budget and, and what do you see as priorities uh, to preserve or enhance uh, moving forward with the budget as mm -hmm. um, those tough decisions have to be made every year? Yeah, well, I know a few years ago, I think the budget was a, a pretty scary place to be. Obviously, we had a lot of open facilities that were in, open in our district and buildings that were open in our building and our um, district, like the Metcalf and some of the elementary schools. Um, but now that we have come to kind of an end on that, you know, we're closing the chapter on that. We've 
we are figuring out that um, many of the things we are able to concentrate are, um, you know, our students, our technology wise, and making sure that we are fully staffed in every building. Um, so for me, the most priority thing is making sure that we are teaching our students and we're giving them what they need. And that comes, um, obviously COVID was able to show us the technology piece was important and making sure every child had technology Wi-Fi in their home. Um, so budget and every and every organization is, is a conversation that's never ending, but I find that we are in a good place and we continue to work with um, some of the um, COVID fundings that we have received um, and, um, and allocate that to, place, to, pay, to places and areas that we know we will want to grow in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the next thing that's always a priority, always a hot topic is the achievement gap. And what do you see as some strategies to support um, in closing our achievement gaps uh, through the various achievement gaps that are measured presently? Correct. Well, you know, like you probably, everyone already probably knows that the last year, you know, getting those um, that information and that data when it comes to student achievement has been hard due to COVID. And we have seen um, in, in many districts and not only our district, the decline in, um, in achievement in our students when it came to having to um, do distant learning and having to deal with a lot of the um, issues that COVID has brought on to families. Um, that being said, um, I really do appreciate the fact that our district is able to look at data, learn where, where we can do better, um, reach out. We, you know, we have recognized that reaching out to family, um, parents, and community members is where it really starts in order for all of our students to um, to grow and be um, engaged in in any way possible in all of our activities and you know um, curriculum, all that. So it really does take a whole community to meet that achievement. Um, and I think that our district has done a very great job making sure we're able to. Um, have the teachers, have the um, administrators involved in making sure that we're able to provide that. Um, we don't scare away from data. And I know that, you know, sometimes for other districts, it might be very hard to really put numbers against numbers, but we are looking at them and we're making sure that we're, we're doing the best we can and providing the best education for all students. Um, and that includes our, our, you know, children of color, um, families of color, and making sure that we're able to, you know, provide that in each in each um, school. Okay, thank you. With that, you talk about it being a a, a broad effort uh, for some of these achievement areas. One of the interesting things with Burnsville uh, or District One Ninety One is it's actually Burnsville Egan Savage as it stretches yeah. across multiple communities. Uh, are, are there ways or techniques that you think you could help uh, the district connect with some of these communities a little bit better and different organizations that can help partner with the district? We've got Chamber of Commerce, we've got um, the city administration and staff in each one of these uh, communities. Uh, and, and, and any thoughts there on what you could do to help uh, bring that together? Yeah, well, I think we've already done such a great job um, with the cultural liaisons that we offer in each of our schools. Um, also local community members. Um, I think that we have done a great job in regarding um, connecting with um, local employers, local workforce centers, um, just to make sure that we're able to meet all families. Um, again, it's a community effort here. Um, and we're realizing more than ever that um, connecting with our community will make every school district succeed. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and thank you again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for making some time, allowing our voters to uh, get to know you a little bit more, especially those uh, with the, connected with the Chamber of Commerce. As we, mm -hmm. as we kind of depart here, what are your thoughts on what makes you the best candidate to represent our area in a District 191 school board? Well, I hope that I'm, I was able to kind of um, prove myself in the last nine, 10 months that I've been doing all school district activities and board member um, activities. Um, but more than anything is I make sure that I'm involved in my community. Um, I'm able to hear from community members, um, parents, 
Um, not only am I also um, a parent um, that has kids in our school district, I'm able to also take that hat alongside it with um, you know the other parents and what they're looking for, what they're asking for, um, and providing the, the listening ears for all that, right? Um, and then making sure to bring that, uh, those kind of things to the board, to our administrators, to our superintendent and see where we can go from there. Um, because I, I really do see myself as an ambassador for our community members. And, um, and that is why they've put me in this position to run again um, and give, given me that opportunity, encouragement to do this. And I hope and wish that everyone can come out to vote. Um, as many people already know, the absentee ballot is still is open um, and the actual board election is November 2nd. Um, so it's not a normal environment or normal election year, um, but I really do hope that um, with the help of my, um, my colleagues and community members, we're able to get the word out to vote. Thank you and thank you again for joining us. One clarification, so Sue, you go by Sue Saeed um, mm -hmm. on the ballot. Is it going to say Sue or is it going to say your formal first name? Uh, my for formal first name is Sue Odd, and then it will have parentheses Sue, then Saeed. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for asking that, Brad. Thank you for the clarification there. Uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, just a reminder to the audience that uh, both Sue and Abriana were invited to this forum today. Unfortunately, it looks like only Sue was able to make it, but we appreciate uh, her mm -hmm. very much. Uh, with that, um, as it's been said, absentee ballots are available. Um, you can pick them up uh, at your uh, local city offices, as well as the school district offices, depending on mm -hmm. where you live within the uh within the District 191. Uh, so you can do that. Otherwise, uh, polling places will be open on November 2nd. Uh, just make sure to check the Minnesota Secretary of State's office as far as what polling place is open. As, it, as mentioned, it's an off election year and your normal spot may not be open this time. But then thank you very much. And with that, uh, Jennifer, back to you. Yeah, um, Brady and Sue, thank you so much. Um, thank you to Brady Folkstead, Chair of our Public Policy Committee and uh, our moderator for our candidate forum. And great to meet Sue again and learn a little bit more about her. Thanks again to our sponsors, uh, Krauss Anderson Companies, EFH Companies, Shippers Resource Center and XL Energy for making this happen and uh yeah please get out and vote in this special election on november 2nd or before have a great afternoon thanks thank you thank you